Today's episode of The Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown is brought to you by Jeanette McKenzie, Realtor at Forest Hill Signature, Jewelry Forever at JewelryForever.ca, and Beautified by Romina. Enjoy the show. Broadcasting live from Glenmore Record Studios in Toronto, this is The Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown, your Sunday morning talk show with interesting guests, live musical performances, and the most fun you can fit in your coffee cup. Hosted by Scott Dion Brown and Regina Elena, this This is is The the Sit Down Down with with Scott Scott Dion Dion Brown. Brown. It's Super Bowl Sunday, 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 Sunday. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good morning to you all. Welcome to episode 256. Wow. Wow. (laughs) 256. Unbelievable. But it is episode 256 and the Super Bowl Sunday episode. Yeah, and Valentine's Day special. And our Valentine's Day special. It's just all of those things wrapped up in one. Exactly. Did you do anything to prepare for either of those two things? You know what? Let's be fair. It's been a while. We haven't been on air live in two weeks. Yep. I've been deprived of the sit down. Like I text you saying that I had dreams about the sit down. It does feel weird, right? Whenever we don't have it each week, it feels like something's off. Mm-hmm. You know, well, that's what happens when you do it for 256 episodes, oh, everybody. you're not recording. Oh, okay, I'll do that too. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 256. I am your host, the one, the only, Scott Dion Brown. Mm-hmm. Hello. Uh, and I'm joined by the greatest co-host in just all of the galaxy, the one, the only. Regina Lena. Happy Sunday. Happy Super Bowl Sunday. Valentine's Day week officially starts yep. and the sit down Sunday. It's a beautiful thing. It is. Hello to you all and uh, a very happy Super Bowl Sunday as well <laughs> to you all. Um, we should have like a counter on how many times we say Super Bowl. <laughs> that's how it's a sweet count, the count yeah. Super Bowl special. Like, yeah. bink, bink, bink. Um, I completely forgot it was Super Bowl Sunday. I noticed. Which where, usually, where usually, yeah, usually Super Bowl What's Sunday. Because well, usually Silver Lining would be here. Yeah. No, Silver Lining's in November. Oh, Grey Cup. They're mm-hmm. Grey Cup Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't usually have a set guest for Super Bowl. No. And also, I'm wearing a, a, a jersey of some kind. I've usually got a football. We kind of do a thing. But you've also been busy traveling. Yeah, I've been busy. And, you know, we were just talking about it. Because were, we were talking about just before the show, like, Oh, what are things we could talk about? And you're asking me if I've heard of all these things that have happened. Yeah. And I knew none of them. Like, I heard of none of them. And Which is I, really strange because normally you are on it. Yeah. But, I, you know, lately, though, I find I, I've been, like, paying less and less attention to the news. I just have been. Mm. I, I think I've just been more busy, I guess. More focusing on, like, you know. Life. Well, like I used to watch a lot of Philly D, still do sometimes, but like uh, for a long time I was watching Phil DeFranco almost every day and I would get, he's good at giving you sort of the headlines, what's going on, Mm -hmm. you know, you watch that every day, you kind of know what's going on internationally and I just haven't been, sorry Mm. Phil, but I just haven't (laughs) been. So, so it's just like, I I don't know, I don't know what's going on. See, I usually get my take on the news, either watching the news in the morning or even social media because I feel like TikTok and Instagram just kind of. Yeah. All these content creators out there. Yeah, that's true. I, I heard TikTok is actually the number one place uh, young people get their news from now. Mm-hmm. So, there you go. But speaking of content creators, we have one here. Yes, let's bring our in guest in. Studio. You introduce her. Uh, okay, so our guest, like I said, she is a content creator. She has some fun uh, reels up there on TikTok and Instagram with her amazing family. She is none other than Justine Haley. Hello. Hello. Thanks so much for having me. I'm definitely very, very honored to just finally meet both of you. So thank you so much. And I just can't wait to share this journey and to everyone who's actually wanted to start something and turn it to something really big. I think I'm I'm just here to inspire each and one of you. So thank you. 
Welcome to the show. Yeah. Nice thank to you. Meet thank you. you. And uh, and uh, thank you. You brought us a gift, so we have to show everybody. Yes. Yes. You guys should try this. This so is. What do we have here? Yeah. This is Lady Glaze. Um, I wanted to just make sure that you guys check La Lady Glaze. This is one of the best donuts in KW area, so you better check them out. And um, yeah, it's the best. And I can't wait for Regine and Scott to try them. So, so, whoa, so KW is Kitchener, Kitchener Waterloo. 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 Look those at are those bad boys. Yes. So we got chocolate, and this looks like... Um, this donut is called Chocolate Mess. Chocolate oh, Mess. No. Yes. I think I'm going to get it's have a mess right mess. there. You said chocolate mess. I'll eat one later. All right. I'm diving in. Yes. Ooh. So this is the... You're going to make a mess before you even eat the mess. <laughs> it's literally chocolate mess. This is the chocolate mess donut from Lady Glaze in the Kitchener-Waterloo area. So it looks like on the top here, I, I can see Rice Krispies. Mm -hmm. Is that coconut? Looks like coconut. Yep. What are those balls? I think it's something like a little like crispy. Just try it. Yeah. And then it looks like, or it looks like Oreo bits. Mm -hmm. Chocolate. Mm -hmm. Do you need a napkin? Yeah. We, we'll be fine. Do a little, do a little AS, ASMR. So we need to hear the crunch. Oh, yeah. Two. There mm. you go. Mm. What's the verdict? It's nice. I like how... um. Is it super chocolatey? It's not overly, actually. Okay. I actually like the Rice Krispies and stuff. Oh, I lost piece. <laughs> I like the... um. It had some crispiness to it. Yes. Like oh, a nice. crunchiness to it. Yeah, chocolate all over your face. Mm -hmm. It's fine. It's, su <laughs> it's Super Bowl Sunday, Regine. Yay! Mm. One more bite. Speaking of w Super Bowl more. Sunday, what are some of your go-to Super Bowl must-haves? Like, snack-wise. Yes, I was going to say what snacks is mm. the best. Um, I like nachos. Yeah, I'd say nachos. Mm -hmm. And like the dip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, chips. Yeah. I like chips, too. Seven-layer dip. Yeah. You're a vegetarian, but like chicken wings. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tofu uh, wings. Ooh, tofu wings. Love that. Why not? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really have like Super Bowl parties that often. I only watch Super Bowl for halftime. Same. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. just here for the halftime. Mm -hmm. The performance, really, because it's... I wonder how like all the production just dives into like... All the the concert and stuff. Mm -hmm. So like that's what I'm really looking forward to. Me too. I remember um, Jennifer Lopez when she did Super Bowl halftime. Mm -hmm. She actually documented the whole thing, um, and it was really interesting to see how much work actually goes behind just the performance and like, yeah. the money that goes behind it too. Wow. It must be so nice. this year, mm -hmm. Usher. Usher, 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 Usher. Now we were debating. Let's make some predictions. One, mm -hmm. what songs do we think he'll sing? And who we think he'll bring on stage with him? Well, rumor has it, Justin Bieber is going to be there. Like, he's already in Vegas right now. I like the Biebs. And he was just at, here in Toronto for the uh, NHL weekend. All Star game. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, and Usher discovered Biebs, right? Mm -hmm. So it would make sense that he would show up. Yeah, for yeah. sure. For yeah. And who else do you think he's coming with? Well, he has to bring on Ludacris. And Lil John, for sure. Yes. I'm trying to think of who else he could bring on. So that I think means. That's it, like four guests. It's okay, songs that they definitely have to play then. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because then the Luda can come in and be like, sit back. But L R Lil oh, John's in there too. <laughs> yeah! Okay, so it's got to be. So so that song's ever going to be there. Everyone's thinking he's going to start with yeah. No. But I think that's too obvious. That's going to be his closer. It has to be, or at least in the middle, because then if you bring on Luda and Lil John right away, they're just going to sit there and stand there. No, like, there's no. no way that's the intro. Because, like, think about it. What You close with your best thing, so you can hit with a bang. If, a if he lot opens. Of his songs are. Okay, but what's his biggest hit? He has a lot. And when I say his biggest hit, it means like, because I don't hardly know anything about him, but I know those songs. So yes, yeah. OMG. He I has. feel yeah is like for me, like just in my opinion, I feel yeah is like yeah. really big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, That's the one that was played everywhere. Like, blah, 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 blah. yeah, but that was like the number one song for a long time. But he also has like confessions. But see, here's the thing. Usher is a sexy performer. Mm -hmm. Like people sexy. go to Vegas for his residency, which is almost like a Chippendales show. All right. 
So like that. people go and spend money for sexy usher. So is he gonna bring people from the crowd and like dance on them, or is it gonna be more of like an mm. upbeat usher concert? Yeah, not a seductive. My guess is he won't be bringing anybody on stage. He'll bring Taylor Swift up on stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it'll be um if if he brings anybody it'll be like some of the, maybe the cheerleaders can come on mm. for have dancers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um because like think of it this way. If he doesn't close with yeah, mm -hmm. what does he close with? What's exactly. his closer? That makes sense. OMG. Oh my god. Na, na, thing na, is na. that that song is good, but it doesn't um I think the beat of it, it's not as hard hitting. That's definitely gonna be in the show. In fact, I think he might even Actually, no, he'll probably open with, like, his latest. He has to open with Daddy's Home. If he doesn't, I'll be really upset. It's a missed opportunity. Just Is that your favorite? Is that your favorite song? It's just a lot. I do like the song. Yeah. A lot. It's, but I do like the first. Can I play it? Or will you get demonetized? Well, you immediately get demonetized. Yes. Okay, never mind. But, like, it just. Can I find the lyrics? Let's see. Because the first lyrics is literally, I want to get. I just want to get your attention. I really want to be all up in your head. Cause what I, cause what I got you, okay. I'm gonna stop reading because it sounds really weird coming from me. <laughs> but like there, ha that has to just be like that first like boom. Cause you know it's how, like a catchy kind of like it's a great intro. Yeah, it's like everybody. Oh, like oh wow, like yeah. People yeah. Are I just want to get like, your attention. Yeah, exactly. Boom. Like there's no way yeah. he's not fact, gonna start with that. Like maybe he'll start with just that intro. Exactly. That's what and then I'm it'll saying. go like. Um, Lights down. He's in another spot. It's a then, different song. Oh, I love that vision, though. Right? I love that like, vision. <laughs> like, I can't already envision it. It's like, wow. When everyone's like, oh, no, he's going to open with yeah. I'm like, no, he he's He won't not. open with yeah. He's going to close with yeah. He has to. We have to make a bet. Really. Yeah, so, yeah, so here's a, a bet. So predictions. But we're all saying it's not, so we can't bet. <laughs> well, see, predictions. He will close with yeah. Yeah. Because what else is he going to close with? Or maybe he'll put it in the middle so that Luda, uh, Little John can have their own moments. Like, remember how uh, Dr. Dre brought on all these other people? Oh, my gosh, yeah. And then yeah. they all had their own little segment. But then, but then yeah, so then what's that. his closer then if that's his uh, opener? I don't know. Will I still think there's... Well, how's Justin Bieber going to get there? <laughs> I'm like, hang on. Did they ever do a song together? They did. What was it? What was it? Wait. One moment. You need a napkin, sir. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to lick my fingers. I don't think I have any here. He did. Justin Bieber and Usher. They performed. Because he's ever gonna do. Somebody to love. I just want somebody to love. So that one's gonna happen, but that won't be the closer. That'll be somewhere in the middle. That will be in the middle. Mm. They'll close with yeah. Yeah. And I think. Oh, will be uh, near the beginning, but not the very beginning. I think they're gonna have confessions in there because that song made. Which one's about. confessions? This is my confession. Oh, imagine he brought out Alicia Keys and they did my boo. Oh my god, I would die. Oh, that one too. I would die. Uh, my boo. I would. I would die. I would be like on the floor, but like, oh, oh my, my god. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Do you think he might do that? Like, I don't know if Alicia Keys would come to. The, maybe. I mean, like, I'm a special performance. Yeah, I'm like a special performance. Instagram. I mean, this, the, the Super Bowl is the biggest thing, so you got to think they'll grab. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. You I'm got excited. a bad love in this club. We wanna make love in this club. Mm -hmm. In this club. One. Oh, in this club. Okay, yeah, yeah, I know that one. There's so many good songs that he can do. Yeah, but he's gonna close with. Boo, 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 boo. I think it's in the middle. That's what I think. Thing is, it would be a good opener, but I think it'd also be a good closer. I think it's in the middle. Because then what? And then Luda and 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 Lil John are gonna leave for the rest of it, or they're just gonna be hype men? Well, for they're the rest literally of it? just like pop up. Like he, I don't know. But he has a whole verse is. in in that one. Yes, yeah, so they do the middle like that is like the climax, and then it. But that's why I think the climax was when you close. Isn't it usually like the middle and then it? I don't know. We'll no, see. You got you to we'll go see. out. You go out with okay. your biggest song. Okay, for Let's those just... who are watching, let us know down below. Who do you think? Yeah. It only, but if this is after Super Bowl, then that doesn't count. No. <laughs> but anyways. He, oh, he could open with that. Oh. I wonder if he'll do your the intro you're talking about. And like a little bit of that song, that and song. then go into. No, that's gonna be in the middle. It's gonna be. In but the see, middle. like Usher is touring. I was so mad. I tried to get tickets for his like presale, and they're gone. Oh yeah, for and sure. And then I went again for another presale, but it was only like, specifically like the floor level. I'm like, I ain't spending a thousand dollars to see Usher. Hmm. I love you, but not that much. So I think it's gonna be a good performance, though. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like he's he's a a veteran performer. He knows mm -hmm. his stuff. Yeah. 
And our dear millennials, of course, is going to stay tuned in uh -huh. with his performance. So, well, it was like yeah. when L Dr. Dre was doing soup halftime. Yeah, super, soup halftime, <laughs> Super Bowl halftime. Yeah. Like everyone was on. Oh it. yeah, yeah. Because that was that was huge. That was really huge. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, one thing you mentioned. So, so some people are speculating because obviously T Swift is going to be there. Mm -hmm. Obvious. People are saying that some people think that he, she, he's going to propose at the Super Bowl. I'm just going to call it. I think you agree. No way. It's not happening. We all agree that's not happening. No. 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 Imagine the like. Ugh, there's so much pressure. One for her boyfriend. What's his name? Travis. Kelsey. Kelsey. That's a lot of pressure on a guy. Like people yeah. like who have been doing like those interviews with him have been asking him and he's just like like he's over it. Yeah. Like yeah. but if you think about it's uh, I don't know. This couple is very interesting to me. <laughs> yeah, but I I I can't, I can't see for starters like when would he propose at the end of the game? What happens if they don't win? Well, then but like you said earlier off air like if he does propose then it's not going to be about the super bowl anymore yeah it, it just wouldn't ha there's it's not going to happen i'll be amazed if it does but it will not happen i'm calling it, it's not going to happen no just seeing your thoughts no for me i f i feel it's not easy to kind of combine your work and your personal life mm -hmm. yeah. because the attention is the game but right? that's what they've been doing i know it's oh. low-key kind of getting there mm -hmm. but it's just I, I, th I think for him, it's really hard to, you know, just kind of incorporate his personal life with the game. But imagine that pressure to like, let's say randomly he decides, yeah, I'm going to propose to Taylor tonight. Mm -hmm. His mind during the entire game is going to be on the proposal. Yeah, and exactly. Not the actual yeah. Super Bowl. Yeah. That's a lot of pressure. That on is a lot of pressure. So that that's why I was like for a man to propose on the actual big Super Bowl game, yeah. that's not easy. No. Like like how is all the cameras going to be suddenly the spotlight is with the proposal and like what about the game and like, like even mentally. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mentally, I'd be like in a whole other world. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And what if Taylor Swift doesn't say yes. Like they just started dating. Whole drama. Just started yeah. dating. That, like that's the other part too. Yeah, that's another album, right? We're, we're all just assuming that like, like oh yeah, they they must no okay. They're not ready for that. Yeah. Well, we don't. We they're don't, still getting to know each other. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're just they're just it's not gonna happen. They people literally just started dating, folks. And yes, I understand in Hollywood that's like a ten year relationship, but no, it's not yeah. happening. There's such a magnifying glass on um. On everything she does, a hundred percent. Like where they're like, oh, is she gonna make it from Tokyo to to Vegas and and all that? Like, I'm like, oh, guys, I don't care. Like yeah. everything she does. Well, like what we were telling me, people were mad at her. At the oh Grammys. yeah, they were mad at her at the Grammys because she snubbed Celine Dion. Yeah. Did you hear about that? Yeah, I heard about it, but honestly, like with with Taylor, I I don't want to just do my comment or just share my comment like there's a lot of things but then i just keep it like okay you love her you don't love her like that's totally their yeah. opinion right so i was like you don't need the for me, coming from yeah us. like for <laughs> me it's it's just she's just not i'm not just a fan that's all but mm -hmm. nothing against anyone who loves swifty right so mm -hmm. that's totally their choice yeah. yeah and we'll leave it at that <laughs> well i mean i i guess i have to see the video i didn't hear i didn't see the video but i i'm guessing it's <sighs> I saw the video and I mean I watched it live and I yeah. was like, ooh. So it actually stood even before you heard the controversy, you thought it was weird that she didn't say anything about uh, Celine. Okay, Scott, uh, hold this for a second. Pretend okay. like you are the police. Fifties don't come after me. <laughs> okay, so pretend you're Celine Dion and you're handing me the award. Mm -hmm. Okay, look at me. I'm Taylor Swift. Yeah. 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 Okay. But I mean, you said that there were a bunch of people on stage, though, in that moment. Yeah, so there was a lot of commotion. She had a whole entourage with her. So she was probably just, you know, overwhelmed would you not be moment. like, "Oh my God, thank you so much," and then maybe, but it, you could also forget. Maybe you also forget. How do you forget? Celine Dion is right in front of you. Yeah, because you're, you know, on on a stage, you're in performance mode, and you're taking. Okay, but like Miley Cyrus is the exact same thing with Mariah Carey, and she was fine. You no, know, and she actually, the fact that she acknowledged the other artist besides Celine Dion is. Mm -hmm. you know a, a huge thing so so she acknowledged the other artists yes. on stage with her yeah but not celine so now what 
I'll exactly. Have, I'll, I'll watch the video. I'll have to watch the video. Yeah. Do you know how lucky you are that this is covering your mouth right now? <laughs> <laughs> but I'll say this: is that like no? <laughs> what are we saying? Are the odds that what that 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 T Swift like hates Celine Dion and there's like a rift hates, between I think, them? I think there was just how she handled it is what people were like magnifying yeah. on her. Mm-hmm. But what do but we? But then bl- her team went back because they're really great at publicity, yeah. is they got her to take a picture with Selena and took a picture together and posted it on social okay, media. Okay, but, so, so, but then what that means then is that like it was clearly not on purpose, right? Like it's not well, like yeah, she... yeah, I hope it like, wasn't. Sh- it's obvious, but that's what I mean. It's like the intent for me is what matters. If she was like in the heat of the moment and there were so many people on stage and she's just taking, you know... It's hard to remember every little thing. I would have totally fangirled if Celine Dion was in front of me and I would have been like... <sighs> yeah, like for me, yeah. I, I just feel like you are there to get the award. And so the fact that the legend is giving you the award, shouldn't you not miss that moment to kind of acknowledge the real who legend is? Yeah, like, what? like wow, like, yeah, like, wow, you're handing me the award. This is from the legend. So I mm-hmm. I should have, like, acknowledged her at the same time. Like, wow, thank you so much. It's coming from you, right? Mm-hmm. You've been known for the whole, like, how many years already? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I know it's also, like, Scott also has a point that you are in that moment and sometimes it's like, oh, I have the award and I just like your world suddenly stops, Mm -hmm. right? But if you are in the present moment and knowing that who hand your award, I think it's... just stood up for her and cheered, gave her a standing ovation because she just walked on stage where she does have a medical condition Mm -hmm. and the chance of her actually being on stage was like 5%. Exactly. Fair enough. But wait, so that means she already gave her a standing ovation. Yeah, but okay, Scott, you're missing the point. You need to watch the video. I do need to watch the video, but my point as I'm saying is... If immediately after when I guess there was getting some reaction on social media and then they were immediately able to like get a picture of the two of them afterwards, what that means is that probably Taylor went over and went, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry I didn't mean to do that. Can we just get a picture t- together? Like people are kind of like, I'm so sorry I didn't mean to do that. that that's what means that is. That's well, then we should have there. seen that. Well, that's what we saw. We got a picture of them together after. I'm just saying like... If we don't believe that it's like, oh, yeah, she definitely did it on purpose because she wanted to make sure that everybody knows that Celine Dion sucks and that Taylor Swift is the real person. I think we're giving T-Swift too much airtime right now. Sure. <laughs> but but again, it's because everything she doesn't. I, I'm just saying I don't think it was probably my guess. If nothing else, it was a little brain fart on her part. And I think we should just leave her alone. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think we should leave her alone. <laughs> <laughs> Take that word. Leave her alone. <laughs> yeah. Yes. How, um, you know what we need? Because I know I was talking about how we should have like um, a count for how many times we talk about Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Yeah. On the Super Bowl, we should have like a tick for a ma- that would be a really bad drinking game. Every time the camera pans on T Swift, you take a shot. Everyone would be just plastered by. We all just show. die. Wow. Everyone would be dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah. we are here with content creator Justine Haley. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's let, fact, let's let's actually talk about something. Uh, talk about you a little yeah, bit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 a really you know a, such a great opportunity to be here, and I just wanted to kind of like share my journey mm-hmm. because right here in this podcast, everyone is just talented. Can I just say? Our dear Scott, I've been watching his stuff and he is so creative and having this opportunity to just sit down and just kind of like have all creative brains is such an opportunity. But I was just saying that um, with being a content creator, right? So it's it's something that you kind of want to really put out yourself out there, right? Mm-hmm. It's It takes courage. Mm-hmm. It takes courage, right? So mm-hmm. what I wanted to, to share with those who are aspiring, those who are actually wanting to start somewhere, just as as how I started, I started with nothing. Like I started with, you know, like flashlight for my lighting. Wow. Let's be honest, right? That's reality. Mm-hmm. Yep. I started with using my phone. I started with, you know, like a little room. Mm-hmm. I started with like putting like my backdrops are like cloth. Mm-hmm. Like I would just buy from a fabric store. Mm-hmm. It all starts from there. So it's just really how you... You know, put everything together because what it is, is what you're enjoying is the journey of putting everything together until you create something big. Mm-hmm. Right. So yep. like when I started, I started with makeup videos. I I've, I've started with makeup videos where I was just focusing on how to do, you know, like 
kind of different looks mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But then I decided to expand because along your journey when you're creating, you are going to find and evolve your knowledge of how you want to, like, what are the things you want to share? What are the things that how you want the people to see you, yeah. right? So you kind of wanted to, wanting to be open of like, what are the new things that you can put out there? And for me, I wanted to share my lifestyle in a way that, you know, we all know, let's be honest, it's inflation out there, mm-hmm. right? And one thing you want to see in your social media feed is like a life that you're having fun, yeah. right? I mean, as they say, everything you see on social media is not true. But then if you're putting positivity out there, that's that's the things that you have to feed your brain. Mm-hmm. Do you guys agree? Yeah, for right? sure. So yeah, so like, just my advice is that for anyone who's actually kind of wanted to start somewhere, I do also recommend to network, network mm-hmm. with people, because mm-hmm. that's how I grew as well. Uh, I was actually starting making and creating videos. I didn't really care about views and likes Mm -hmm. because I think in this genre especially today with the digital world I feel like we all just base everything on likes Mm -hmm. and views Mm -hmm. and when the time that I started to drop that I'm like you know what Mm -hmm. I'm not here to really you know have people like me I'm doing it for me I'm doing it for myself Mm -hmm. I'm doing it to grow and to evolve and to see what are my potentials and to kind of reach my capabilities of oh I didn't know I didn't see this coming I can do this Mm -hmm. right because that's how you it's like a test and you know test and learn and like you have to make sure that you you learn from the things that didn't work and you learn from the things that's working Mm -hmm. so the time that I drop the thought of like the pressure, Pe- the pressure, mm. you know, pleasing people, you mm. know, we're here to just m- keep it real. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, right. That's, that's, that's kind of like your videos where you have a concept of what you want to do. And then like you try to figure out how to get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but it's also interesting that you said you started with like makeup. And yeah. And like your niche changes. Yeah, it go. just changes. And so like when people follow you, they follow you. Probably for a particular reason. So, for example, like this person followed me, it's because of how I, you know, fix my hair or how I style my clothes and everything like that. But then I wanted to make sure that the audience just not see that Mm -hmm. because people can, you know, people like, as you all know, change is constant, Mm -hmm. right? So people can, you know, learn from this person where, okay, she's so good at makeup, but then, oh, she's also showing a different side of her where, you know, the reality of, you know, the lifestyle of what she has. So Mm -hmm. those are like things that people look for the, the authentic raw, like, what is it that you can, you can bring to us, right? So that's, I just wanted to make sure that every like, you know, follower or, you know, whoever is watching me you know, have that interest mm-hmm. that, you know, even so I am focusing on sharing my lifestyle and, and like being a content creator, I wanted to have them learn something from me. And I like, I'm just happy, like if somebody asks about, hey, can you give me advice? Like what editing, how are you doing your editing? How are you doing your like, those little questions. So how are you doing your editing? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So how do I do my editing? So I, d- I have a lot of like editing software. Mm-hmm. I started with Adobe Premiere Pro. I love Final Cut Pro. CapCut is always um, on my phone. I use CapCut, yeah. Yeah, right? CapCut. Um, it's a real-time editing software that I always use sometimes uh, because it's on my phone and I just, you know, like do real time edits as at the same time, mm-hmm. um, especially if I'm doing like stories and I'm doing like reels and TikTok. And um, when it comes to like effects and like anything costume related, like transitions, anything mm-hmm. really heavy editing, I do it with Final Cut Pro. What do you use, Scott? Uh, I edit on DaVinci Resolve. So Ooh. fancy. <laughs> Why div- I, like just hearing the name is like, I wow. Know. Well, yeah. DaVinci. Like, wow. Well, DaVinci Resolve, it's, it's, it's the newest one. Like it came mm-hmm. out, it's came out newer than say Adobe Premiere. Mm-hmm. Premiere is still like the main one. But the only reason I don't use it is because I didn't want to pay monthly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, That's I why just, I use CapCut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, it's it's true because like you want to start something. Of course, you don't want to put mm-hmm. out your money out there. All yeah. Like, like yeah. I said, like when I started, I didn't use 
a heavy, like, pricey camera right yeah. away. I used, like, my phone. Mm -hmm. And I didn't care because I was like, okay, I just want to try. I just want to try this out and see it's free. But I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Exactly. And that's what matters, right? Mm -hmm. you, it doesn't matter. You will see other creators out there. They have, their like, their tripod and everything. Like, they walk with, like, camera. Mm -hmm. And so you do your own thing. You yeah. start from where. Because sometimes it is the less effort video that usually kind of, mm -hmm. you know. I can't find my tripod. Remember the one that I brought last time? It's in no. my house somewhere. I don't know where it is. You just you just click something. I was like, "Where's my truck?" Yeah, <laughs> it's time to buy. A, it's time I to get one. Back. I don't know where it is. It's somewhere. It's like one of those ones that like fold and like compact. Oh, so now I I'm like, that. "Oh, shoot. it's too compact. <laughs> it is. It's just gone. It's just gone." It's in my backpack somewhere. I think. Yeah. So when you're when you're coming up with stuff and and what content to put out there, um, what goes into your decision of what video you're going to create? So that's a good question because what I do start is I do, I do take notes. Mm. I do take notes per week of what I wanted to put out there. And so I kind of film it in a day where I'm just free for filming. That mm. is it. So mm. I just make sure that I make time because, you know, when you're creating, you got to really dedicate your whole time to it, right? Yeah. So you have your own personal life, you own your, your you have, you have everything, right? Mm. But then if, when it comes to creativity, you really have to give time for it. Yeah. So what I do is that I do write them all down. And, and then after I do write them down, I kind of like per, like, let's say, for example, for a topic that I wanted to show, for example, I wanted to do like a, a recipe, like a, like a recipe that I wanted to share out there. So I kind of like, like kind of brainstorm and then like I put everything down, like where should I film? What should I wear? Yeah. What should I, like what kind of camera, like, like angles, mm. right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's like that. And then in that day I would film. And then if I have extra time, I would film another something else like because even if you have like all raw videos on your phone yeah. yep. even from throwback videos you can create something out of that mm -hmm. yeah you can always tell a story out of that so if you think that okay this is kind of like stressing me out i'm burned out i don't know what to create look, look at your drafts yeah. look at your drafts okay. look yeah. at yeah. look at your your camera roll from your phone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can put all the pieces together from even in the past let's say you went to like somewhere a couple of years ago and then you just randomly say hey by the way you know i just wanted to share this trip from like 2016 and you know just it's it's okay to go as as far back just just, just like telling a story because story people time. storytelling i think in this genre is very important mm -hmm. because that's how we learn and gain experience from mm -hmm. right so it took a while for me to really do my speaking points. Like, even I, don't, I didn't want to be in front of the camera because before, like, I was just doing makeup. I didn't know how to talk. I didn't even know how to start. Mm. But then when I started watching YouTube videos, when it was at this peak, I think somewhere in the 2000s. 2016? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I started watching videos and I'm like, okay, what, it, what does it make them different for me not to be able to speak? Because... You know, like I wanted to, to also talk and I wanted to share my experiences. But then there's always going to be somewhere in the back of your mind that's really going to like say, oh, you can't do that. You... But once you break that, it's definitely endless possibilities. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to start new, meeting new people. You know, you're going to start, you know, being invited with like podcasts mm -hmm. and like um, like any creative, cre I mean, creator, creators, uh, like meetups and stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. Or you get asked to um, or judge a pageant. <laughs> yes, yes, which is so, such a great opportunity. Hi, Cindy. But yes, I was going to say it is definitely a great opportunity to really know new people. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when I was starting, I got created, uh, sorry, not got created, but I got invited to the YouTube space Toronto in 2018. It was my very first invite to meet all new creators. And it was really great experience however you know when you're new you're like oh my gosh this is like mm -hmm. overwhelming like i can't like i just have like this kind of like followers but these guys when i search them on like on my million. phone yeah. i'm like they're, they're they're adding they're asking me to add them and like when i see they're like following like what what millions i'm like wow like yeah. <laughs> it's normal to feel that way like you meet new people like with large following but if like 
you keep that as an inspiration, mm-hmm. I think that is really going to keep you going. Mm-hmm. And sometimes for me, I don't really base someone else's talent or, you know, I, if I know that and I see a person that you are talented, mm-hmm. I think like the following is just a bonus. Yeah. The yeah. likes is just a bonus, but it doesn't really matter. Like I can see potential in a lot of people and sometimes what's holding them back is the likes, is the following. And if you just learn how to drop that and don't worry, just do, you. Just do your thing. Yeah. One video, I promise you, just one video that hit millions of likes and that's the, that's the start of your new yeah exactly so, breakthrough. So when you're creating, because I I know I find for me it's like, um, it's a, it's a very much you have to almost discipline yourself to like oh, yeah. get to like. So do you have like maybe a, do you have like a set schedule? Like do you say every week this is the day I shoot videos, or do, how do, how do you actually like maintain say consistency? Yeah. So with in a whole week, what I do is that I do film two at least two content i mean not two contents but two days Mm -hmm. and then in two days i get all raw videos together Mm -hmm. and i pick songs already while i usually post it on the weekends and towards like the middle of the week Mm -hmm. and then one thing i also wanted to say is that when you say consistency i know that's one of the most kind of hardest thing to keep up with consistency mm-hmm. right yeah but right you can be consistent but at the same time when your body is telling you that you're gonna have to like slow you down. know slow down you mm-hmm. have to because yeah. for me one thing i also learned is that creativity should be a creative outlet not yes. f- for you to be pressured to you know oh i still need to do this i still need to do that but then it just clogs your memory and like it just is just overwhelming mm-hmm. right yeah, so talk about burnout right? yeah, yeah it, it shouldn't be like that it shouldn't be like that so what do you do what do you guys do when you have creative blocks like what do you i wanted i wanted to hear because like i always ask create creators and i always want to see different perspectives right mm-hmm. so how do you guys handle if you yeah. you're in a creative block um i'm gonna go first so for me, I mean, lately anyways, I, I don't find f- the creative block is the hard part for me. Like, in fact, na- my cur- my problem now with my stuff <laughs> is that I Get have, done, Scott. Get yeah, I have like tons of ideas mm-hmm. and I also have tons of raw video. Yeah. Like, like I've shot, say, multiple vlogs and At multiple the cider festival from like 2019. Yeah. Wow. Multiple, multiple unboxing videos. Um, I'm Trip. working on several trips, several songs. I've got the I'm Just Ken video. And they kind of, I film I all these things. And I, for me, it's been finding the consistency of sitting down and, and pushing the content out mm-hmm. just to actually edit it, it all. Yeah. And then the other part I have a problem with is like, so like I'm working on my next short film right now. Mm-hmm. And the script, the script is finished in the sense that I could just shoot this script. But I know it needs some work. Mm. But I find... Um, my brain likes to procrastinate. <laughs> like it's like when, when I know that there's going to be something I have to do that's going to be like mentally taxing, like editing a video. Yeah. Right. Like even like that Macho Man video that I just posted. Yeah. Like it was a short little like four minute video. It was like twelve hours of editing. Wow. To get it finished. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I couldn't believe how long it took, but that's you are just. A yeah, but it was like, but but I'm not even saying like the twelve hours of editing wasn't me like sit like that was twelve yeah, hours of straight no. working, mm-hmm. but it took so long to like. So when I, but because I know, okay, I'm going to edit a video t- soon. I got to get that done. But I also know in my mind, that's going to be 12 hours of like mental work. Yeah. It's like, it's like my body will naturally like find, it'll push that's it just, down the road. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. I feel you. I think that's, that's real. That That's reality. Mm-hmm. That's reality. Like yeah. just thinking of just the like, process, oh, just yeah. thinking of the process of, okay, I'm done with the raw, shooting all the raw videos. Mm-hmm. But then when you know that the editing is really going to take time. Well, that's, that's really mentally. That's why for me, it's like if I film something, I have to do it that day. Yeah. Like if I don't, then I'll be like, oof. Like I do, my TikTok is not even a lot, but I feel like if I do a TikTok, if it's, let's say, a Sunday, like behind the scenes of the sit down, if I don't do it that day, I'm like, well, I'm not going to do well, it. That's not happening. Yeah. Because yeah, I'm like, I can't be like, happy Sunday. And I'm like, let's do it. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. That's true. So like I force myself to get it done. Like my hair transition video from yesterday i'm like if i don't do this while i'm on the subway i'm not, not gonna, gonna do, do it. it yeah i so i think that's why i think so it's part of the way i guess so when you asked how i deal with the creative blocks again the problem for me more is like 
You're creative. Yeah, just... forcing myself to get that part done. I guess the way I tend to deal with it and the way I eventually get stuff out is like I kind of create a deadline for myself. Yeah. So like the way I did the Macho Man video, for example, is I was like, oh, I'm about to leave for Vancouver. Yeah. Okay, well, let's make it that I want this video must be finished before I leave because okay, so I'm how gonna be about gone. I'm just Ken has to be out before the end of February. There's an extra day in February this year, so you have an yeah. extra day, Scott, but it has to be out before the 29th. I like that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I can do that. And we're all going to keep him accountable because we're putting it out there. Yep. Exactly. Yep. I, yeah. I feel like if I don't do that, he's not going to get it. <laughs> yeah. But no, that's a good that's a good way to do it. I, I did mean, that with the, your short film. <laughs> true, true. But the, the other problem with that and also just, it, it's not even just like there's, it's this past few months especially, like there, I've been busy in with other work yeah. and like what's happens is other people will hire me to do videos for them mm -hmm. and so Stop suddenly hiring him until the yeah. end of February <laughs> so suddenly then well actually I'm just thinking about my February right now there's actually I might have to produce like f four videos this and month and guess for what other people. Uh, I'm just Ken is one of them I'm just Ken is one of them okay so yeah it is it is tough I know and, and I, I know how my I can see my how my brain works like, for example what will happen is like let's say I know I have to work on something and like it needs to be done by tomorrow yeah. let's say so like, and it's like, okay, great. I set aside all of today to edit the video. What I should do is go straight to my computer when I wake up and start editing. But what I'll do instead is I'll like, okay, well first, oh, okay, what should I do first? Well, it makes more <laughs> sense. Okay, I'm going to go to the gym first. Okay, great. Get that done. Oh, you know what? That thing needs to be clean. I better clean that. Yeah. And so I'll find like. You should create a TikTok or like a day in the life. Exactly. You where you're like scattered you can, all you over can, the place. Yeah, you, you need to do that because I, I honestly love those you know, a day in my life uh, videos, Same. like the, the, the raw, like, mm -hmm. yeah. like people would love to see like, okay, you making coffee or like that. breakfast. I love that. Yeah. Do it. So then what anyway, ends up happening I'll is like, is like I'll start. <laughs> yeah. That's the only way to get done. Okay. But, so what'll happen is if I only set aside one day mm -hmm. of to do this thing, what'll happen is like I'll, where I could have started the video at like nine o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. I'll start editing the video at like seven o'clock at night. Yeah. And then I'll edit all night until like three, four, five in the morning. Then it's done. I met my deadline, which was the next day. But like I could have not pulled an all nighter. Exactly. But yeah. it's like because I knew I was like, this is going to be exhausting for me. And the other thing that's funny is like when I start editing and when I actually get into it, mm -hmm. it's like I'll just sit at the computer for like seven hours. Exactly. Not moving. That's real. Yeah. And then I'll get up and I'll be like, whoa, it's been seven hours. Oh, I'm so hungry. I'm so oh, sore. God, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. but anyway, so, but because I know that's going to be so tiring, it's like my, my brain naturally pushes pushing, it away. Yeah. yeah. See, for so. me, I think that's normal. Yeah. It's, it's, it's everyone's experience that mm -hmm. when you think it's kind of overwhelming, but then when you start, it's like, okay, I can't stop this yeah, anymore. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because like for me, I used to do content for a bridal shop. And so I would... So what, what? how it happened is I was in between jobs. So I knew if I got this video done today, I'll get paid today. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, let's just, That's nice. I needed that incentive to just like go there. And like, it was always, you're here for, for a, I think I was at the shop for maybe four hours once a week with um, a consultant. And we were just like shooting wow. nonstop. It was a very sweaty job because you're trying on dresses is a lot of work. Yeah. But then going back to your point about like what happens when you have a brain fog and you're like, what do I do yeah. now? It was literally me just on bridal TikTok, just getting inspiration from other creators. I love mm -hmm. that. I love and that. then that way you're like, okay, well, this is how they did it, but not fully copying them, but yes. like getting the ideas. ideas. Like, oh, okay. Like, yeah bridal inspired by disney it's like okay so these are the girls that they are the princesses they did mm -hmm. let's try different princesses yeah. but then also their dresses are different so i would go in and shoot four so it was four hours so each hour we did it where we're like okay we'll do because it's like per month so mm -hmm. we'll do okay let's do four reels three to four reels each day wow <laughs> yeah. a lot of work <laughs> that's a lot of work really and so that was so it worked because the the consultant knew what I was doing. She mm -hmm. knew what dresses we would pull. Like I would already message her ahead of time so that when she got to the salon, she already pulled the dresses. Wow. That's well, good though. At least somebody's like working behind the scenes because mm -hmm. imagine if you're just starting there and like you had to like... But the first day was like really hard because we're like, okay, what are we going to do? She's yeah. like, can you tell me? I'm like, this is my idea. So I would have to actually show her the inspiration video to actually yeah. see like, okay, this is my concept yeah. yeah and as we started working together she's like oh, okay yeah let's do it yeah so yeah. you're able to just push through but yeah 
I like to look at other people's reels for inspiration. For inspiration. No, that yeah. makes sense. That, that makes sense. sense. Or like yeah. even CapCut with all their templates, like seeing what you they can have. create everything exactly. from there. But then like making it your own without fully exactly. copying theirs. Yeah. Cool. I changed the music. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, same. <laughs> same. Yeah. We should do the ads. Yes, please. Let's do our quick ad break mm -hmm. to acknowledge the people who make this show possible, yeah. everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, today's episode of the Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown is brought to you by the following fantastic advertisers. Mm -hmm. Let's meet them, shall we? The Toronto real estate market is growing and changing every day. In these challenging times, you need someone in your corner. Jeanette McKenzie, realtor at Forest Hill Signature, is committed to looking out for you. She'll go the extra mile to ensure you have all the information you need to make a decision you can feel confident about. Purchasing a home is one of the biggest financial investments you'll make in life. Don't leave it to chance. Call Jeanette McKenzie at Forest Hill Signature. She's my realtor, and she could be yours. Call today at 416-523-0408 or email at jmckenziehomes at gmail.com. Calm. Mm -hmm. Jewelry forever. Conveniently located at CF Markville Shopping Center on 5000 Highway 7 East Markham. They do custom made jewelry. They repair damaged jewelry. Mm -hmm. They can change your watch battery or they can do custom laser engraving. Mm -hmm. It's all done on site. Yes, it is. Jerry at Jewelry Forever, an incredible artist. If you have a vision for something custom you'd like made, he is the man to make it. Follow him on TikTok and Instagram. You will see some of the behind the scenes work he does. Um, fantastic work. And we have a great deal worked out with them, don't we, Regine? Yes, we do. If you go in and let them know that Scott and Regine sent you, you'll get 15% off your entire purchase. That's right. 15% off. One, five percent. An incredible deal. Yeah. Head on in there. Mention the show. And guess what? Valentine's Day is on Wednesday. It's so you right still around have the corner. Some time to check him out. Get on over there. Get something beautiful. Mm -hmm. And uh, find out more at jewelryforever.ca. Beautified by Romina. Internationally trained hair and makeup artist. She is the official makeup artist of the sit down. Not only does she do our hair and makeup for uh, our photo shoots, but also when we MC live at events or even That's just right. attend events. Uh, she also does engagements, weddings, pageants, corporate headshots, date nights. Red carpets. Exactly. If you're a guest at a wedding, she doesn't just do brides, but she also does their guests. Anywhere you need to be beautified. Exactly. So check her out on Instagram and Facebook at Beautified by Romina. And if you would like to advertise on the show, it's very easy, right, Regine? It's simple. All you have to do is email us at radio show ad. That's radio show ad at gmail.com. That's right. We do the show live every week, people. And we also read the ads live week to week. What does that mean? It means you can personalize them week to week. Do you have an event, a sale, something happening at a particular time, a particular place? You let us know. We let your potential client base know in real time. It's a great way to build a brand new relationship with a brand new audience. Get in touch. Radio show ad radio show ad at Great. gmail. Dot com. And we timed that perfectly with the end of the music. We did. Look at us go. Wow. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. We're here. Episode 256. That's we are... wild. I know. This is time. Just time. Where, where does it go, Regine? I don't know. But we are here with uh, Justine Haley. Hello. Hello. And uh, one thing I did want to do quickly. Oh. I was le recently in Vancouver. And I was in a store, and the store was kind of neat. It was like a convenience store, but they had like the, all these imported things. Mm -hmm. And I saw this weird bag of beer flavored chips. Hmm. Beer flavored kind of chips. Perfect for Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, that's why I did it. That's right. Oh. Planning. See? <laughs> yes. Oh. Yes. Sometimes you have, sometimes you're going to have nachos mm -hmm. and chips, sometimes you're going to have beer. But oh, I, I can't, I can't, I, I don't have enough budget to buy both. There you go. Beer flavored chips. The drink and the flavoring of chips in one. And um, I was just curious about it and I wanted to know what it tastes I like. I don't like beer. So you don't like beer. Um, how do you feel about beer? I'm I'm good. Like it's I know how it tastes like, but I can tolerate the taste, I guess. So you're not a huge fan, but you, you can Yeah, have it. yeah, I can I can tolerate it. Yeah. Okay. I'm good, yeah. Um I on a nice on a hot day on the right occasion I enjoy, it. I enjoy I enjoy you think so? I can't just go... 
we can try, but I know with those eggs, sometimes it's easier to just rip it. Oh, there you go. Boom. I love a ASMR. Smell it. Oh, it actually... Oh no, if it smells like beer, I don't want to smell it. It, it actually does smell like... Nachos. No, I got a whiff, <laughs> I got a whiff of beer. Oh. In fact, you know, what's, you know what it smells like? You know what it smells like? Years ago... Um, you, you ever see those places oh, where? Ew. Yeah, you ever seen those places you. where no. you can here have a smell? Ew. I don't like the smell of beer at all. Okay, yeah, it's it's like it's giving smell. me like a pub vibe. I like, like I'm already it. yeah. But you know what it reminds me of? So years ago, so you, you ever seen those places where you can go and make your own wine, and yeah. like bottle your own wine? Yeah. So so my parents oh, ew, do that. that they, gross. Yeah, <laughs> my parents do that and they bottle their own their own wine. Yeah. But I remember years and years ago when I was a kid, a couple times my dad went to one where you can bottle your own beer. Yeah. And so we they have one of those in Scarborough. Yeah, so you actually mm -hmm. make one. So, uh, and this smell smells distinctly like what it smelled like mm -hmm. in there. I don't oh, don't yeah, like that smell. that it's hops, like, it's like, hoppy um, smell. Steam whistle. Yeah. You walk into the breweries and it's like, oh. I'm surprised how much it smells like beer. I don't like it. I don't want to try it. it you know what? It smells like hops. It smells like hops. Hops. Yeah. Hops. Okay. So are, are, are we trying one? You are. You have try to try it. one. Try I, one. I don't. Go I don't like. Beer. Are you trying one? Just a little. Just a little. No, you should know. try one. Try it Regine. first and then tell me if it's. Yeah. Like let, let's see how yours. Yeah. Try let's, it first. Okay. So we'll get my reaction yes, first. Yes. Yes. I don't. Like I'm just curious how much could this actually taste like beer? It does smell. Let like me know. It. Try it. It even smells like beer. It smells like a. a, a, a it smells like I dropped this in a beer <laughs> and then it dried. You know what I mean? And three, two. One. Ooh. <laughs> I wish you could zoom in on your face right now. Yeah. I could smell it. I don't like it. You know how the bitter taste of a beer is? I, I could imagine it already. It, it, it tastes like a chip that was dropped in a beer. No, I'm good. Just a little. No. Uh, to be honest, it's not bad. No. Try one. You have to try one. Or, uh, do you want to try one? Yeah. You don't have I'll to. I'll try. I'll try. I'll try one. She can tolerate beer. I don't like beer. It's actually not that just... bad. But okay, it's I'll, weird. I'll try a little. It's Yeah, just take a little little nibble. Just so you have an idea. Smell it, girl. Okay, yeah. It You're smells right. like it a... It smells like you had a dip. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. I, there's something about the smell of beer that I can't tolerate. You know what? I don't know why it's like, like a kind of like an apple taste. Apple? Yeah, it's it's the hops. It's the hops. Hops. Hop. Yeah. No, thank you. Oh, and it's like salty too. So it's. Uh, it's, it's not, not bad. bad. It's, it's not, not bad. bad. No. Yeah. It's, it definitely tastes like I get the hints of the beer, and there's also a bit of a sweetness. Yeah. And it's. I can't do it. Sorry. It's weird. It's just the smell for me that threw me off. I'm good. You know what the thing is. I was worried it was going to clash a lot more, and it actually doesn't. So do you yeah, think it you doesn't. can pair that well with a beer? Oh, yeah, definitely. No. Because <laughs> I think the, the taste of a beer and having beer chips, I think you're not going to be able to distinguish the taste mm. anymore. That might be true. I mean, right? so it, 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 almost like, yes. it almost like negates it. Like, you don't need to yeah. have both. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But in my opinion, this one... The more you keep eating the chips, I think that's the more how you're going to be able to kind of really taste the real taste of it. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I think this mm -hmm. is really perfect for a Super Bowl. There you go. How many Super See? Bowl did we say today? At least 20. <laughs> Super Bowl Sunday. See that? It's, it's actually... I really noticed the beer when I first hits my mouth mm -hmm. and then as i chew it's just kind of just like kind of like a, sl a sweet chip yeah like the moment i took a bite i felt like it was like there was like a little apple taste yeah the hop the hop hops the hops i think it's hops but i'm i'm quoting the, uh, he's just weird about it no i'm <laughs> quoting the there's a movie called beer fest and there's a scene where he's like reading a recipe and it's in germany he's like hops mm. so that's how i say it now no there's something about the smell of beer that i just can't no, my girlfriend doesn't like beer either I don't, I don't just like wine? it. Just wine? You guys are like more wine. I'm not a wine person either. It's just the smell of... Yeah. I think it's like it triggers something in my oh. brain that I just can't. Mm -hmm. This one has a lot of the flavor on it. It's like... Ooh. it's like. Oh, man. It's like trauma. <laughs> in a bag. I can't yeah. do it. Yeah. No. That one I just ate was much worse than the others. I don't even want to smell your breath. Like, it I was much worse like... than the others. Yeah. That's interesting. 
I don't like beer. I'm impressed. I'll say this. I'm Let impressed. Let your dad try it. I will. Yeah. No. I, I am impressed with how well they were able to capture the beer flavoring in here. I, I didn't the, know what to expect. I had the garlic bread flavored ones and I didn't like that one either. Did, did it actually taste like garlic bread? No, that's why I didn't like it. Oh. People are like, oh, it's great. And I tried it. I was like, ooh. What does it taste like if it's garlic, but not garlic? It's not garlic bread. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was good. There you go. I, or, or, I mean, was it good? It was interesting. It was decent. It was, it was okay. It was edible. It was, yeah. I think it was okay. Yeah. I'll eat them all. I'll, I'll finish this Let your dad eat it. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to share it with him. I'll, I'll let him try it. Very good. I'll wash it down with a... Uh, I'll wash it down with a chocolate mask. Yes. You're going to have more chocolate on your face. Delicious. Yeah. It's treat. Treat day today. I, I, or cheat day today. It's, it's yeah. Sunday fun day. With yeah. Them. And it's Super Bowl Sunday, right? I mean, Super yeah. Bowl, so. And we really need to play. Can you edit a counter on here afterwards? <laughs> um, probably not. <laughs> Speaking of 12-hour edits. There you go. While. That'll take a while. There you go. Uh, what else were we going to talk about? Pigeons and how they're all over oh, yeah. the city. So, so is it? did they do this because there's like an increasing number of pigeons? There's way too many pigeons. Okay, so yeah, this is a weird story. But apparently, in fact, here, we've got the article here. I'll just show it to you guys. Toronto has a pigeon problem. The city hopes birth control is part of the answer. <laughs> so the Toronto is planning to put all of our pigeons on the pill. On the pill. On birth control. Let's see. Ongoing pilot project uses bird feed containing birth control to stabilize the local pigeon population. Hmm. So the city of Toronto hopes the results of a near year-long pilot... So this has already been going on. It will give it a new tool to keep the city's pigeon population under control. They installed bird feeders mm -hmm. with birth control feed called Ovo Control. Can you imagine if they accidentally put laxatives in there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are the side effects? That's going to be a mess. Oh, There's just too many pigeons. I... I mean, I guess there are. I, I, I've just never really noticed that there's, like, a huge... You know what? There are a lot of raccoons. We should put raccoons, raccoons on, on birth, birth control. control. That's true. They eat every... We have the fattest raccoons in our neighborhood. Yeah. Like, well, they, they don't even fit through the gate anymore. Aww. They just eat our garbage. No, lit Can I go on camera? Literally, yeah. there's... I know we're talking about pigeons right now, but there is a... Um, there's two... Chunky monkeys who raccoons, not monkeys, raccoons who are like trolling through our area. And I caught we caught it on camera where like the gate is here, and there's like maybe let's say this much, for example, of space. And normally they're able to like screw it, right? Yeah. yeah. So they walk to the gate, they looked at it, they like kind of like looked at each other, and, like <laughs> analyzed this whole thing, and then like they're like, Nabi, they turned around and like walked away. They're like, We ain't gonna fit through here. They're chunky. Yeah, did you guys hear about the the one of the raccoon that caused the, the electric? Uh, oh yeah, somewhere in Toronto. It's like an outage. Yeah, the outage oh, yeah. because of a raccoon. Yeah. Did you guys hear about that? I, I think did. I did. Yeah, they yeah. Did, r r threw, threw some wires or something. Yeah, something yeah, like threw that, some yeah. wires. Yeah, a squirrel did that once in our area too. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Anyways, going back to the pigeons. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, let's see. Um, the city said it's received complaints on the growing pigeon population, making it hard for residents to enjoy green space. Okay. They enjoy, enjoy green space, balconies, and urban areas throughout on Toronto. That's, That's why I decided to try to feed the pigeons with food containing birth control in an effort to deal with the problem in a humane fashion instead of harming, trapping, or poisoning the birds. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. We're hoping this method will be able to get that population more under control and manageable so that people can enjoy their outdoor space and we can live, you know, together in harmony. Okay. It, well, I'm surprised by this. The project only costs roughly $500 per site, hmm. with each site targeting about 150 birds. There are currently two sites, so that means they only spent 1000 bucks on this, two sites in downtown Toronto, with another soon to be installed, and one in East York and another in North York. Oh, thank God. <laughs> so 1000 so bucks. I'm just surprised because like, cause it's a government project. I mm -hmm. thought it was going to be like $20,000 for this one, $80,000 for this one. No, because they know if they did that, then everyone would be against it. True enough. That that's doesn't funny. usually stop them, though, but yeah, that's true. <laughs> Willowdale Councillor Lee Chang hopes to see the pilot project expand to her ward, expand to her ward where residents have complained about not being able to use their balconies due to pigeon infestations oh, oh, God, and the mess they create. 
I mean, I could see that. Yeah. I mean, pe- people are not fans of pigeons. Let's not show pigeon poop on our yeah. show, please. This person, when I read about this pilot, it's like a ray of light for us. There's hope in the battle against pigeon poop. There you go. It's been used in the United States and in some places in Europe. And it's also been used here in Canada. Okay. Did it work in Vancouver? Because they did it in Vancouver too. So the transit operator conducted its own pilot using OVO control, sponsored by Drake, apparently. Mm -hmm. OVO branded birth control. Who knew? Uh, In 2019, for 18 months, the birds were of a specific concern because of their ability to impact transit safety, but also spread bacteria. Yeah. Have you ever been... At this TTC, it's like the subway station, and all there is is pigeons. It's disgusting. A pigeon flew into my head once. Really? Yeah. They say it's luck. I well, should have bought the lottery ticket. <laughs> Some kind of luck, yeah. should have bought a lottery ticket. <laughs> right. So according to the Vancouver, they're saying it basically stabilized the population. I'm so sick of it. Some residents split on the project. About what? The majority of pigeons really flying above Toronto streets were domesticated by owners who have likely raced or bred them. Really? What? Why would you do that? Wow. Since the, and then abandon them and release them into the city? Since they're domesticated and not wild, this method is helpful in trying to control their population. Oh. 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 I didn't know. <laughs> That's a thing people do? Why? Wow. Let's see. Oh. Then this person says, something like this isn't necessary and the city's attention is needed elsewhere. I'm totally against it, she said. Just leave them alone and focus on stuff that actually are more pressing. I'll, I'll be honest. I hate I hate that type of criticism. Um, focus on things that are more pressing, because people always say that when um, they don't have uh, uh, an argument against it. Yeah. Because like it, it's a, a, a government's job is to look at many things at once. Including it's not like they the can pigeons. only look at one thing. Yes. So it's like it's not like because they spent the thousand dollars on on this thing that they, they're not doing something else. Exactly. They're just putting a light on it right now because so, there are way too many pigeons in Toronto. Yeah. I've heard about something being done about that for mosquitoes. Similar idea. They were supposed to drop a bunch of... I can't remember. They were going to drop something on the population. Same idea where like the... the oh, no, no. Well, their, their one was they were... They bred a bunch of mosquitoes that were um, sterile. Released those into the wild. Oh, my. So that way when they mate with other mosquitoes, their children won't be able to have babies. And after a few generations, that population of mosquitoes just goes away. Wow. So I have heard something about that. It's just a pigeon. Ooh. Yeah. It must be tough to be a pigeon. You know what it is? I noticed about being a pigeon. Is it that? Because you, have you ever seen a pigeon walking? Every time they walk, their head has to go like. I know. It's like, it's you, like you're listening to like a, like a sort of like a music. You're vibing. Yeah. You're yeah. vibing. Right? <laughs> but can you imagine like every step you had to take? You had to like, like your head to go like this. <laughs> I feel like it's got to be tough. It's going to be a hard I'm life. I'm sure people who are drugged out walk like that. <laughs> I guess that's true. And have you also seen like pigeons are mean to each other? Like, have you seen some pigeons walking around and like they're, pigeons they're are just mean to people? But like they're missing like toes and because like the, the pigeons will like bite each other's feet and stuff and bite each other's feet off. Mm, it's tough being a pigeon. Ones, I know. Yeah. If you go to Pape Station, that's where all the pigeons are chilling. Oh, that's where I got hit by. So that's so pigeons are smart. Okay, like they because most subway stations it's like the automatic open and closed doors, right? Yep. So because it's winter. They are inside the subway station, like where the bus terminal is. And then when it opens, when someone walks, they go, whoosh, they, they fly through. Sorry, I hit your camera. And that is how I got whoosh, in the head. Oh, my gosh. It literally like flew. Okay, turn your head this way so I could. So this is a pigeon, right? <laughs> it went, hit me in the head, and then flew up. Wow. Uh-huh. I was were like, wearing oh, my a God. Ha- were you wearing a hat no. or anything? No. So I went right to work, and I like washed my hair in the wow. sink. I was like, ooh. Did you guys know in the Philippines, pigeons are like treated like as a pet? People have pet pigeons? Yeah. Yeah. People have pet wow. raccoons. It's like they, it's like that. a pet, but then they understand like how they're being called. Like there is this like way dog? of the of Filipinos back home that when they just clap their their hands and kind of some sort of like a whistle. Like a noise. A noise. And they would come. They would come to to mm. to their kind of like little house that somebody built for them. They go home there, and then they would just fly away. I would never. Yeah. Isn't it? Was it pigeons that they used to use to communicate with each other? Yes. Were you able to send messages yes. with pigeons? Like for like, I think somewhere back in the like <laughs> the w- kind of like a war, the war. It's like yeah. pigeons were used to deliver messages. Yeah. 
Did my, you say owl? I went to Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter is those ones, yeah. Like the one who just drops the invitation. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think I think it was pigeons, right? That it they was. Were, it was. In yeah. medieval times and stuff. Yes. So I sent a pigeon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they must be pretty smart enough to do that. Like, that's cool that you could like send a pigeon like across the land. Yeah. Well, guess what? Now they're on the pill, so they'll be more hormonal. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Can't rely on them for that anymore now. Oh. Mm-hmm. They'll be like pissed off at you and like drop it on you and stuff. That's right. Well, we'll see if this pilot program works. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. It's a weird story. I told you it was strange. Yep. Um, actually, there was one other thing I wanted to ask about before we go to our final segment. Okay, go for it. And I'm trying to remember what it was. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, going back to social media creation. There you go. I know that one issue that I... I mean, I kind of deal with it by just... I, I'm just curious what your thoughts on it. Is that sometimes... For me, I'll, I'll like, like I said, I could say my Macho Man video. Mm. I spent like 12 hours on it, right? Mm. And there's always this thing of like, you know, obviously finding the motivation to keep going forward yes. in the sense like sometimes I'll put out a video, mm-hmm. you know, and I'll get 50,000 views. I'm like, yeah, that's so cool, right? And then I want to follow up with something. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to make something awesome. And I'll spend like a week creating a super awesome video. And then like, six people watch it yeah. you know and that's can, that can be very like ugh, yeah you know? it's, it's very demotivating to be honest because yeah. after like a, a one video that just made a hit mm-hmm. and then suddenly you make another one that's close to kind of like improving what you've done from the past and then here you are and you will just see it like two views and stuff like that yeah yeah, yeah. I think it's it's a normal feeling that everyone feels. Yep. Yeah, like my TikTok was like that. The, yesterday I went on, I posted my hair transition and I was like, damn, 500 views mm-hmm. in like two minutes. And yep. I'm like, cool. Yeah, right. Like, like other when, videos. It's yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's, it's part of the, it's part of like the mentality of being a creator. It's like, I don't, like I don't care anymore with with the views. Like if yeah. you if you're here to watch my video, thank you. But if you're not, I'm doing it for myself. Exactly. I'm it's happy. A I am happy. So what's important is you have to find your true happiness when you're creating. Because if it's if it's stressing you out, if you're just here to create because of likes and views and you know just to you know please people, then it's it's gonna be a battle. Right. So what you mm-hmm. want to do is that you grow and you evolve. And that's what's important. Exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. I think I found it kind of the same way. Mm-hmm. Like I noticed, for example, like my vlogs, mm-hmm. they tend not to get that many views. Yeah. But one thing I noticed about my vlogs is like, say I post a vlog about like a vacation I took. Mm-hmm. Five years later, I will enjoy watching that video because I'm like, oh, my vacation. Exactly. You know? mm-hmm. You're the one who actually enjoys the, the, the videos that you create, to be honest. Exactly. Like, I always come back to the videos and I'm like, oh, I created this. Oh, wow. How did I come up with this idea? Mm-hmm. And then it just makes you like, wow, you realize how much you've grown mm-hmm. with from doing this. And now you're here. Exactly. It's like your own personal growth, right? Mm-hmm. You, you're seeing where you started and look how far you've come. And I think that's what matters. So exactly. that's the beautiful thing of creativity. The people who are watching you are a big bonus. Yeah. And just one peop- or just one person who sees you, mm-hmm. who can bring you to the next level, I think that's what matters. Yeah. Not all like the 100,000. I did, um, from one of my videos I created on TikTok, there is this one video that made a hit, which just like probably took like 4.5 M views. Mm-hmm. It was nice. a very, mm-hmm. um, it was not actually a lot of effort it was not a lot of effort and i'm like oh so i create videos where i do a lot of editing but then they don't really want to watch that but Mm -hmm. they they just want like a low exerted effort like Mm -hmm. okay so where do i have where do i stand from creating now so i don't know if i have to but like just putting your continuing to put yourself out there and Mm -hmm. just not worrying the pressure of okay these people are just you know two people watching me Mm -hmm. you never know one of that person watching you is going to bring you to the next level so that's you never know who your audience is Mm -hmm. people can disguise to somebody else and just like think that oh i'm watching this person but then i want him to my team you never know true yeah i guess maybe where you would get in trouble is like let's say if you're always just chasing oh what do people like okay i gotta create more of that more of that and then suddenly and then suddenly you find yourself creating content that like you yourself are not passionate about but you think you have to do it and yeah. I think that's when you can find this, fall down this rabbit hole of just you kind of hate what you're doing. Because then what's the mm-hmm. point? Then then you might as well just go get a regular job if you're just going to... That's 100% true. I know. think that's why both of us, 
our we don't have a specific niche on what we post. We yeah. just post we just whatever. what we that's want true. to create. That's yeah. true. Yeah, exactly. that, that's why I never like I never focused on just doing makeup content. Mm. I do a lot of things. A lot of people want to see more of you. Yeah. People like don't let people kind of control your life. Don't oh, I just that, want to yeah. see they're just specifically talking about let's say for example uh, cars, for example. You know, like, what else? What else can you put out there? So mm-hmm. that's what people want to see more of who you are. Exactly. And for me, that's what matters. I'm just putting myself to to let the people know who you really are. Mm-hmm. Right. There you go. I like that message. Yeah. <laughs> we have one more segment. We do. One final segment. It's a, it's a special segment we okay. do every episode. And um, are you familiar with... Are we doing that one or the blue one? What did we do last time? I don't remember. I think we did this one. Okay, sure. Like who, who, yeah, we haven't done that one yet. No, I think we did this one. We'll Anyways, do this, one. this is what we're doing today. Are you familiar with this? No. <laughs> this is, well, I'll introduce the segment. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing this week's edition of the Barrel of Monkeys World Championship. <laughs> so, you're not familiar with this item? I don't know the outer, but when you said something to do about the monkey, I think I know already, but I haven't tried it yet. Okay. So this is the classic game. came out in the 1960s, oh. the uh, Barrel of Monkeys. Mm-hmm. We have a segment on here where every guest competes, and then we see how you do it against other guests, and we just rank, rank everybody. I will do a demo and show you how it works, unless you want to do it. I could do it. You could talk. Okay, yeah, so the way it works... Hands. I do. So the way it works is... Uh, we take this barrel of monkeys. We start where it's on the table. It sits on the table. I put one minute on the timer. I'll say three, two, one, go. You grab the monkeys, pour the monkeys out of the barrel. I'm sorry, so you can see. Take one monkey. Oh. Use that monkey to pick up a monkey. That's not working. Okay. Oh. Use okay. this Nux monkey to try to grab another monkey. And then another monkey, and you're just going to ch- keep trying to extend your chain of monkeys. See that? See how she's going longer and longer? Mm-hmm. Um, and at the end, however many monkeys you have when the timer goes out, you freeze and we'll, we'll count these monkeys. Mm-hmm. The monkey in your hand doesn't count towards your total. So this will be one, two, three, four, five, six okay. monkeys. Okay. Right. If for any reason there's two monkeys, mm-hmm. oh, thank you, yeah. two monkeys on one link. That still counts as Yeah, monkeys. you need to tell her that. I don't think it matters. She, she, but that would happen either way. You normally include that in your spiel. You but, miss the spot. But so, I mean, I think we can remove that part of the spiel <laughs> because it's not... Yeah. Okay, is this something that I need to be really, like, game on? You need to be to focused, you. you know. All right, so I'm handing you the barrel. Okay, so start it on the table, and I will get our... Uh, Put it on the table. Don't, hands off. Uh, okay. Yeah, no I hands. will get... Yeah. I'm just going to add uh, a minute to the timer here. Uh, do you have any questions? Do you have any thoughts? Are you nervous? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Because this is my first time, so let's see how it goes. Let's All do right. it. You can move your microphone too. Oh yeah, move want. that over a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then you'll More tilt space. the camera down. Yeah. yeah. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Three, two, one, go. Okay, pretty good pour. All right, there you go. Nice start. It's all about the pour. Let's see. She's looking for openings. Yeah, good strategy. Okay, oh, she's noticed one there. Maybe approach from the other side. The other side. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Not too bad at all. 30 seconds have elapsed. She's going for it. There it is. Ooh, ooh, not bad at all. Oh, she almost had it there. 15 seconds remaining. Oh, 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 monkey jumped off, but that's okay. It's recovered. She's got it. This is, wow. This is five seconds. No pressure. Time! That was a great run. That was your first time ever doing it? Yes, this is my first time, everyone. Wow. Let's count. Okay, let's count. Um, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight monkeys. That is a respectable score. It is. That is a respectable score. Uh, can I say something? I honestly thought I wouldn't get anything. Really? Wow. Girl. You did great. I'm so happy. All right, well, if we take a look at the monkey standings here. Eight monkeys puts you in third place. There it is. You're tied with uh, East, East of, of nowhere. nowhere, Jenna Marie Donnelly, Anna Goldsmith, Leticia, representing Team Canada Galaxy 2022, mm-hmm. uh, Mika from JDL Cupid Arch, Alona Fiandaka, and Pearly, uh, all with eight monkeys. That puts you right up there near the top. Woo-hoo! The only people above you are myself, Regine, and Chad Beloyne at nine monkeys. All right, experts. Mm-hmm. And then Thea Asadilio and, and James, James Nickel, Nickel 10. 10 monkeys. That's uh, very impressive. Very, very impressive. Mm-hmm. Yay. Um, so how are you feeling now? I'm so happy. I, <laughs> she I'm won't so, even put it down. She's like, I, yeah, I like, can I, can I put it down now? Yes, though? you can. Yep, okay, because I was like, oh, this is like my very first time. And it's not bad. You did great. For a third place. Great Yay. job. That was, I was, think, that was one of the best first time uh, runs we've yes. ever seen. Mm-hmm. It's very impressive. Yes. So good. And with that, everybody, that concludes this week's edition of the Barrel of Monkeys World Championship. Well, that was nice. That was fun. We haven't done that in a while. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a couple of weeks. Um, well, I guess we, we're going to be wrapping up shortly. Mm-hmm. Uh, before we do, why don't you um, let people know where they can find you on social media? Yes, absolutely. So thank you so much once again to sit down for having me. And I wanted you guys to check my content out. Uh, my uh, social media are Justine uh, underscore Haley. So I'm on TikTok and on Instagram. And one thing I also wanted to uh, like announce to everyone is that there is really something very exciting that's coming up this year. But Ooh. I can't just talk about it yet. But Ooh. I'm Teaser. so excited to share something really big Mm -hmm. and so i am definitely wanting to share this with you all and i just can't wait to make the big (laughs) announcement yay awesome so links will be in the description everybody Mm -hmm. big announcement coming soon justin justine sorry (laughs) justine underscore Haley, Haley. both on instagram and TikTok. TikTok. tiktok regine where can people find you you all can find me for on my YouTube channel uh, for the pageant sit down where we just celebrated three years. Yay! Um, yay! <laughs> um, follow or uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Link is in the description down below. You can also find me on Instagram and TikTok at it's Regine Elena. And if you're looking for pageant coaching um, that has been keeping me busy, uh, you can find me at pageantcoaching.reginaelena on Instagram. All of my availability is in the link in my bio. So make sure you check it out. Boom. Scott. Yeah. Where can people find you? You can find me right here where you're watching this very video. YouTube.com slash Scott Dion Brown. Or I guess YouTube.com slash at Scott Dion Brown. Both Yay. of those work. Um, that's the best place. That's where you get the sit down, obviously. Mm. That's where you get the vlogs. That's where you get the music. That's where you're going to get just videos. Ken. I'm just Ken. It is coming by the end of this month, actually. Wow. We've made the decision, right? Mm-hmm. I would check in on you on like the 28th and be like, you have one more day left. I think we can make it happen. I think we can. It's it, There's just a bunch of things I got to do for it, but mm-hmm. I, I, I have been pushing myself to get it done. Um, anyway, yeah, youtube.com slash Scott Dion Brown. You can also find me on Instagram and X at Scott Dion Brown. Um, Scott Dion Brown official on TikTok. I don't post on TikTok very often, but I, it's there. Um, but YouTube is the best place because that's where you get all, everything. And the other accounts are basically satellites for mm-hmm. uh, the YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. You can follow us. The pageant, uh, the pageant sit down. You can follow, but follow yeah. the sit down with Scott Dion Brown. Yes, the sit down with SDB on TikTok. The sit down with SDB on Insta. Sit down, Scott on X. And uh, the sit down with Scott Dion Brown on Facebook. Uh, you can also find us on Spotify. Hello, you, everybody watching on Spotify. And there's a few other um, podcasting platforms that I can't remember what they all are, but we might be there. Just search up the sit down with Scott Dion Brown. And maybe you can also grab a mug at the same time. Hey, you know, I get yourself a mug. All right. Teespring.com slash the sit down mug. Sip like a champion. It's Ooh, everything yes. just tastes delicious coming out of the mug. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, everybody. 
Thank you so much for watching. Justine. Thank you for being here. Thank Justine. Thank you for so joining much. us. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Of and course. I can't wait to chit chat again. Yes, we'd love to have you yes. back. Yay. Um, okay, the way we like to end the show. You can grab that mug right there. Ooh. And you know how I started the show sort of coming out of the camera? Yeah. You could like say like goodbye and you can say like you can push it towards the camera. Yeah. So when, like, we'll send it to you. Yeah. Just kind of try to get as close to the camera as you can with okay. the mug. But before we do, we'll say we'll say goodbye first. Okay. So everybody, thank you so much for being here. Hit the like button if you haven't yet. Hit the subscribe button if you're new. We'll see you next week with another episode of The Sit Down. And I'll be, uh, I believe I'll be streaming some gaming this week as well. Oh, fun. So keep your eyes peeled. Enjoy the Super Bowl, everyone. Oh, yeah, everybody. Yes. Enjoy the Super Bowl. Enjoy Valentine's Day. Yep. And, uh, oh, and Happy Lunar New Year. To happy all Lunar New Year. Yes. There you go. And now we'll throw it over to Justine to end the show. Take it away. All right, guys. So thank you so much once again for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And once again, thanks for having me. And see you guys soon. Wow. Professional. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> Yay.